I envisioned living in this house with just my mom and me until my husband Todd suddenly announced otherwise. Out of surprise, I was confused when he stated, I will take care of all the monthly expenses, so I need you to leave. Firmly raising my voice, I was stunned and puzzled by their sudden decision. Their motives only became clear when my mother-in-law finalized the name change of the condominium contractor. My name is Summer, and in my 34 years I lead a busy life. My father, a workshop manager in a small town, chose this name for me because of the fact that I was born during the summer season. While it may seem simple, it incorporates the deep love of my late father. His polishing skills were renowned in the industry, and despite hard times, I treasured the moments of playing in the workshop as a child. However, the workshop faced financial difficulties, which led to my father's tragic end in the back of the workshop while I was in elementary school. To protect me, my mother and I left the city to start a discreet life elsewhere. Unfortunately, years of hardship undermined my mother's health, and she passed away during my school years. Despite the despair, I mustered the courage to face life head on, driven by an inner passion to showcase my father's skills to future generations. Working tirelessly, I managed to finish high school, earning a scholarship and working part-time to cover my daily expenses while studying engineering at the local state university. While at the university, I met Todd, a friendly young man who noticed and admired my abilities. Unlike many others, he never looked down on me for being a woman, which reinforced my determination. After graduation, we began living together, sharing our lives. Todd handled the household chores efficiently, giving me tremendous support, especially on busy work days. Six years later, at age 28, I contemplated revitalizing my father's small-town workshop, and Todd wholeheartedly supported my dream. During those six years, we often discussed the possibility of marriage, and it seemed like my life's dream was about to become a reality. But I wanted to rebuild my father's workshop first before I could even think about marriage. Todd respected that desire and waited patiently for me to raise the funds. I chose crowdfunding, taking advantage of my position as a female engineer. I incorporated the uniqueness of my story into the advertising campaign, aligning it with the societal shift toward increased support for women. With careful planning and persistence in funding and recruitment, after four years of effort, I successfully revitalized the urban workshop. Mindful of the financial difficulties faced by the old workshop, I introduced the latest equipment and gave the factory a modern and sophisticated design. By creating a women-friendly environment and systems, I sought to create a workplace that was both productive and female-friendly. These efforts quickly elevated the status of the workshop to the highest level in the industry. While some may perceive my success as luck, it was actually the result of many challenges and tireless effort. Todd, my university partner, knew this better than anyone. However, Todd's career was struggling, and while his peers were advancing, he remained a rank-and-file employee, growing increasingly frustrated. He started expressing his dissatisfaction, saying coldly, you're really lucky to have succeeded. There must be someone better for you than me, right? I repeatedly reassured him that my success wouldn't have been possible without his unwavering support. I genuinely believed his involvement in my life and career was indispensable. To express my deep gratitude and love, I proposed marriage. I valued his special presence, pure and warm-hearted sensitivity, bringing happiness to my everyday life. Despite finding great comfort and solace in his presence, I began noticing changes in his heart over the 10 years since we became adults. My hope was to dispel his insecurities through marriage. Upon deciding to marry, we rushed to inform our families. Contrary to my expectations, Todd's family home was an old, decaying wooden house that raised concerns about its stability. When Todd's mother first saw me, she remarked, you're the daughter of the wealthy business owner they often talk about, reflecting my past fundraising and media exposure in the pursuit of success. I had emphasized the importance of first impressions, but the reality of Todd's family background differed from my expectations. I dedicated considerable time and effort to my attire and appearance, aiming for a suitable impression. However, from my mother-in-law's perspective, my outfit might have appeared flashy and excessive, 
She started speaking in a sarcastic tone, implying that I owed my appearance to Todd's assistance. Despite feeling grateful, I sensed tension as I entered their quite old house. Todd seemed to have something on his mind but remained silent. His father, in tattered clothes and with a restless demeanor, reflected the atmosphere of the home. Apologizing for the state of their house, he acknowledged its issues and conveyed that it might differ from the appearance of a wealthy household. Trying to calm myself, I internally took several deep breaths. Each time I made a casual remark, Todd's parents responded with comments about how rich people have different ways of thinking and values than common people like us, making genuine conversation difficult. Back at home, I asked Todd about his parents' views on wealth, and he shared surprising facts. Since childhood, he was taught that fancy apartment buildings were probably built on wrongdoing and wealthy people engaged in shady dealings. They were believed to lack understanding of others' feelings or hardships, and Todd was advised to avoid befriending children from wealthy families. Although I hadn't grown up in a wealthy family myself, I found it intriguing to understand the roots of his parents' strong feelings. Even afterward, Todd's parents disapproved of our relationship. His mother often expressed concern about me making him do too much, while his father advised him not to let married life be completely dominated by his wife. These sentiments seemed to contribute to Todd's declining self-esteem. Behind my successful career was a desire to fulfill my late father's dream, not a wish to look down on others or use them. Despite Todd previously discussing this with his parents, my social success left a lasting impression on them. Attempting to improve our relationship, I communicated and tried to understand them multiple times. However, no matter how much goodwill I showed, Todd's father approached me with bias, saying, This is how rich people think. Their reactions gradually closed off my heart. Meanwhile, as Todd visited his family more frequently due to his father's deteriorating health, we started distancing ourselves. Even though we were married and living together, about two years later, he suddenly announced that he had decided to quit his job because he was too busy with things at home. I was infuriated that Todd made such a significant decision without discussing it with me first. At that point, our relationship had deteriorated into a mere formality, lacking meaningful and sincere communication. He claimed to be busy with housework, but in reality, he frequently visited casinos and racetracks. When I confronted him about his actions, Todd dismissively suggested hiring a professional housekeeper, stating that he wasn't my servant and we had enough money to cover the expense. His words left me deeply shocked and at a loss for a response. Around that time, Todd's father's health worsened and he passed away two months after receiving this news. When mother-in-law and Todd visited my house and he unexpectedly declared, I plan to live in this house with my mother, just the two of us. Taken aback by this sudden statement, I stood there speechless. Todd went on to say, I will pay the monthly rent so I want you to leave. Shocked by this demand, I could only ask, wait a minute, are you really able to pay the rent? Todd, instead of a reasonable response, my mother-in-law yelled at me, expressing her anger and stating that she couldn't forgive me for belittling them. Todd, dissatisfied, sighed deeply, proclaiming that he wouldn't tolerate being bossed around anymore and intended to live life on his terms. Surprised by their intense attitude, I momentarily lost my words, reflecting on their past actions and words. I realized that dealing with them would be extremely challenging. I responded firmly, I understand. I will leave this house next month. Satisfied, my mother-in-law pushed for an even quicker departure, demanding, can't you just get the hell out of here and leave next week? I'm ready for my new life, and I've already arranged for my stuff to be delivered to my new house. Her abrupt demands puzzled me. Considering I had just decided to leave, unable to comprehend her reasoning or course of action, I hesitated in response. My mother-in-law raised her voice even more, asserting, someone as wealthy as you should leave, them moving to professionals, right? She repeated a sarcastic phrase, implying that she viewed the wealthy as something special or different. Initially, I considered it proper for them to move to a new place, since I was the one who contracted for the house. However, my mother-in-law continued to assert strongly, 
This house belongs to Todd. No matter how much you earn, I won't allow you to hide that fact. Behind her words, I sensed a message that my higher income shouldn't make me feel superior to Todd. Looking at Todd's changed and gloomy expression, I questioned why I had invested so much time in such a person. In this unbearable situation where living with them seemed insufferable and I wanted to avoid sharing the same space, breathing the same air, I concluded that it was time to consider divorce seriously. Understood. This weekend, I'll proceed with the moving arrangements, handling all necessary document changes and procedures. When I responded in a soft tone, Todd and his mother exchanged glances, smirking triumphantly as if a long battle had ended and they had finally won. Immediately, I began searching for vacancies in apartments and condos, also looking for a reliable moving company. Amidst my busy days, including work-related business trips, returning home, I found Todd deep in sleep, seemingly ignoring my existence. On the weekend, he calmly signed the divorce papers without displaying any emotion. Meanwhile, his mother was receiving explanations from the real estate agent about the rental agreement and signing the contract. I was particularly concerned about whether she truly understood the high rent of $66,000. After completing all the procedures, I found myself walking alone toward a new place with a high-rise condo behind me. The new apartment, a one-bedroom with secure surroundings, was perfect for me living alone. During the move, I decided to discard many unnecessary things, clearing both my run and my mind for a fresh start. Decorating the space to my liking was an enjoyable time for me, gradually immersing myself in the new lifestyle. Thoughts of Todd and his family started to fade, although I couldn't completely erase them from my mind. Reflecting on the memories with Todd and the challenging times we had overcome together, I never imagined our relationship would end this way, especially during our university days when we struggled financially, supporting each other's livelihood. The strain that developed over time was deep and immeasurable. However, I later came across shocking information. Coincidentally reuniting with a university friend, she told me rumors of Todd floating around in city clubs. Also, a former neighbor from where I used to live mentioned seeing my ex-mother-in-law frequently entering and exiting a luxury foreign car, wearing unfamiliar, luxurious fur clothes and speaking completely differently than before. Hearing about their lavish lifestyle, I couldn't believe they once looked down on the wealthy, particularly after I had distanced myself from that life. I saw how much they had transformed. Then, unexpectedly, two months later, I received a call from Todd. I really need your help. His voice conveyed a level of desperation I had never heard before. I had not expected to hear from him in such a manner after our one-sided relationship ended. Actually, We've gotten ourselves into some unexpected trouble, he explained. What exactly happened? Todd's response indicated that the events had begun three months prior. He was shocked to learn the astonishing truth through a call from his mother. I hit the jackpot in the lottery. Can you believe $30 million? She had apparently been buying lottery tickets in the past, and this time she had won an amount beyond her wildest dreams. Is that really true or is it a joke? Todd asked her to confirm. After checking the lottery numbers multiple times herself, the ex-mother-in-law assured, there's no mistake. I checked it over and over. We are so unbelievably rich now. Now we can face those upper-class people with no problem. Truly, God has blessed us. She spoke with elation, lifting her spirits. Moved by these words, Todd was in tears, and his mother added, with this amazing stroke of luck, you can escape from that woman's clutches. Have you heard? She seems to be frolicking around with some young guy now. Such a woman should be kept at a distance. These words pushed Todd further, and his pent-up anger and frustration boiled over. Now that we've acquired wealth, I won't be controlled by her. We won't have anything to do with her anymore, he declared with a trembling voice, informing me of our disconnection. It became evident that during these events, a common goal had emerged between them to completely exclude me. Subsequently, they began a lavish lifestyle in a downtown luxury condo, seemingly spending extravagantly every day. Todd used his savings liberally, and the ex-mother-in-law spent her late husband's inheritance without any reservations. Excited, they decided to go to the nearest bank to cash in the lottery ticket. 
However, at the bank, they faced a shocking truth. The lottery ticket they brought was from the previous year. Disbelief and dismay spread across their faces. It turned out the ex-mother-in-law had been comparing last year's lottery ticket with this year's winning numbers. Amidst this commotion, there was a deep-seated fear that somehow I would take their wealth from them. Surprised upon hearing their story, I was at a loss for words. That's truly unfortunate and sad, I conveyed my sympathy. Just as I was about to end the call, Todd spoke up again, asking, But we should have a right to alimony, right? Continuing to claim without any basis, he added, You were cheating, right? On that fact alone, we should be able to claim alimony. Explaining his situation, Todd felt stressed about the house and believed he had the right to demand alimony. However, it was clear in my memory that Todd had quit his job on his own accord. My emotions surged, and I couldn't tolerate such baseless claims. I can't believe you would say such a thing. You sleazy man. Are you for real? I raised my voice involuntarily. In this moment, my usual calm judgment and strong resilience frayed. Perhaps sensing my anger, I could feel Todd's surprise and confusion over the phone. Truly, it's me who should be seeking alimony. You only think about yourself, heartlessly kicking me out. Always that want-to-be-rich spiel, I've heard it so many times. Why do you make your mother complain so much? I can't tolerate this attitude of just being jealous without making any effort. I continued with an emotional outburst. After my emotional outburst, there was a moment of silence. Then I felt a sense of clarity and hung up the phone. Their mistake with the lottery ticket astounded me, but now it was none of my business. Whatever fate they met was irrelevant to me. Days later, as I walked in front of my factory, I saw my ex-mother-in-law in a visibly deplorable state. She appeared before me and began to prostrate. Please help me. We can't afford to return the $66,000. Please come back and be a part of our family again. That should have been clearly written in the documents. Why didn't you check them thoroughly? Didn't you understand how serious it all was? And about that lottery ticket, I murmured slowly, choosing my words carefully. Will you truly abandon a mother and child struck by such misfortune? After a pause, I shook my head calmly and said, I believe that luck, in many cases, is something you forge for yourself. Despite hardships, I have strived to carve out my own destiny. How much of that mindset did you have? My words left her with a surprised and somewhat regretful expression. Struggling to find a response, I walked past her and started walking in the direction of the building. After a short walk, I turned around to find my former mother-in-law still standing there, but I never looked back again and kept walking, focused on the path ahead. As expected, Todd and his mother were eventually evicted from the luxury condo. They chose an old wooden shack as their new dwelling, having spent all their savings. Now, they spend their days working various part-time jobs to support themselves and save for the future. Over the following years, I dedicated myself to my work, and my factory grew far beyond its original small-town scale. I secured funds to purchase a larger plot of land nearby and established a new state-of-the-art factory there. This newly built facility was designed with the comfort of the entire family in mind, complete with maternity leave and child care facilities for employees. Although my parents were not able to witness this success in person, Every time I see a smiling couple with their children visiting the factory, I remember myself as a child and feel a deep sense of relief and happiness at the sight of them.